Hello! Welcome to Purple Shirt Thursday, the forum for excellence in solution delivery because no matter what you're doing at work or at play, it is all about delivery. And there you have it. Let's get started. My name is Daryl O'Brien. Today is March 25th, 2021. Beautiful day here in Nashville, Tennessee. Hope you're having a great day wherever you are. And today our topic is going to be cadence. We talked about that a little bit last week, so let's get started. We are Purple Shirt Thursday, a podcast and website dedicated to gathering and sharing information about big solution delivery, which really means uh, big giant solutions to big giant problems that have major impact across the enterprise uh, and then also has potentially great rewards uh, if we do our jobs right. Now you can find us at purpleshirtthursday.com. Look there for this podcast, information about this podcast, links that we'll provide, and also previous podcast links and other information there, as well as some good music. Okay. As I mentioned before, our topic today is cadence. This will be a multi-part series where we go into details about setting cadence in your work or your big solution delivery initiative, your project, or just generally in your work setting. And today we're going to cover basic definitions, benefits of setting a cadence, and a few things that you can do to prepare to set that pace in your work. But first, I want to share a story with you about one of my heroes. Meet Terry Fox. Terry Fox grew up in British Columbia, Canada, and in 1977, at the age of 18, was diagnosed with a form of cancer that was in his knee, right knee. And so at that time, the doctors opted to amputate his leg in an effort to remove the cancer. So they amputated pretty high up. But Terry, being a very active and positive person, immediately immediately jumped back into an active life, golfing with his father, and started running. In 1979, he devised a plan to raise one million Canadian dollars for cancer research. And he would do this by running a marathon of hope, 8,000 kilometers, or 5,000 miles roughly, from Newfoundland to British Columbia all the way across the country. So he began putting things together, getting things ready, and on April 12th, 1980, he had one foot in the Atlantic Ocean near St. John's, Newfoundland, and he began his journey. Now, in order to do this during the spring and summer months, he set a cadence for himself. He would run a marathon every day, 26 miles every day, and that would get him to British Columbia before winter set in that year. So off he went, 26 miles a day, often 10 to 15 miles in the morning, stop for lunch, take a nap, and then finish off the 26 miles after lunch every day. His first few days, he met gale force winds, heavy rains, and even snow. And the donations were slow coming in at the start. But as time went on and he made progress, he began to get some more and more attention. And every day he wore this shirt, Marathon of Hope, followed by a car with a big sign that said, Accepting Donations Here. And soon he began to realize, I'm going to make the million dollars sooner than I thought. So he set his goal for $2 million and then for $10 million and then he decided that he would reach for one dollar for every canadian citizen at that time which was 24 million dollars now as time went on he began to experience severe chest pain and cough fits of coughing and those gradually grew worse and worse and on september 1st in thunder bay ontario he asked to be taken to the hospital during his run that day The following day, he announced that the cancer had spread to his lungs and he would be forced to stop his run at that time. So as of September 1st, running 26 miles a day for 143 days straight, he covered, I want to get this number right, 5,379 kilometers or 
3,339 miles. And, and, and at that point had raised $1.7 million and was well on his way to the $24 million that he was shooting for. So it was, he was gaining, uh, gaining donations at a logarithmic pace. So one of the takeaways I took from this is he didn't say, I'm just going to run every day, run some every day, and I will see how far I get. I'm going to run every day. He set a definite goal that he could do every day. It would be challenging. He knew that he could hit that goal because he had been training and he knew it would be hard, but he could do this every day and he could train his body and his mind to cover those 26 miles every day. Cadence. So over 143 days, 3,339 miles, he made $1.7 million and more. And as a result, the Terry Fox Foundation has raised nearly a billion Canadian dollars for cancer research since that time. Now, so let's talk about cadence in business. What does that really mean? Let's look at it. So steady flow of work or I like to call it managing a rhythmic, steady, and consistent flow of work and events in the work that we, we produce, right? And what are the benefits of managing and leading with that kind of steady flow? Well, it helps us to have better, more predictable outcomes and delivery. Uh, our team members are much more satisfied because we are managing a consistent flow of work and usually that means they can leave and get home every day at five or leave every day at five. The out at five principle that was outlined by Scott Adams. Over time, if we manage a steady cadence, our teams are able to size and estimate work that's coming into the pipeline more accurately. And when priorities change, we can do better impact analysis. And when the occasional marathon for work comes up, I want to say that managing a steady cadence prevents a lot of those uh, project marathons from happening. However, when they do happen, we can predict what they're going to be like. So, for example, uh, we can predict if it's going to need a week's worth of extra work, two weeks, three weeks, a month, or three months. And what is that going to look like in terms of doing the extra work? That way you can pace yourself more predictably. So you don't want to set people up to sprint a marathon, right? If it's going to be 100 yards over two days, okay, you can set your pace for that. If it's going to be three or four miles, you know, you can, you can do the math, right, and set your pace. Now, one of the things that happens if we set a steady cadence in our work is that teams there'll be marked team members will march individually to that cadence that you set for them. But at some point, the rhythmic, uh, that rhythmic energy, you know, they converge and your team suddenly find a team rhythm. And when that happens, suddenly they're able to do more at, with higher quality in the same amount of time. And that's a fun, that's a fun point to reach when you're setting a cadence. We will talk more about that in the weeks to come. I do want to say one thing about cadence, though. I've tried to implement this in a number of my initiatives over my career, and there have been times when I've failed miserably, and there have been times when I, we, we have enjoyed immense success with setting a good cadence and, and been able to deliver a lot of high-quality work in a relatively short period of time without killing ourselves. And the difference has always been, in that case, leadership. And so more to come on that, but I did just want to point that out. If you want to implement cadence into your work, into your teams, there's a couple of things you can do to prepare uh, to roll that out. First of all, you want to get an understanding of what your teams are really doing with their time. So. I've often, even if there's an existing time management system, sometimes I'll ask my teams to say, keep this record here and put down what you're really working on from day to day. If you're taking time off to go help another team member uh, with an issue, or if you're taking time off to do something away from your project uh, for whatever reason, just note it here. This is not a performance evaluation. This is just helping me understand where people are putting their time and then how we can manage that going forward. So 
and then we and I'm very open with people as we roll this out, uh, so that there's no um, no worry of hidden agendas or anything like that. We can have open discussions as we're doing this. The other thing that we want to do is to build a roadmap of all the work that's in front of us for our team or for our organization over the next 12 to 18 months. It's good to get a visual of that. Now, many times, if you're, especially if you're getting out to 18 months, you're just going to have to ballpark what the size of that work is and what it looks like. And you can organize it however you want. There are tools out there to help you with this, but just to get started, I would do it in either Excel or PowerPoint or some tool like that, or even just on a piece of paper. Uh, I've seen people get on a whiteboard and tape the whiteboard off into, into um, quarters and then just start drawing with markers, things like that. So um, just get a rough idea of what the workload looks like over the next 12 to 18 months. Get an idea of what your team members are really working on, how they're spending their time. And that sets a pretty good foundation for how we're going to roll out cadence in our organizations. All right, that's it. So if you have any questions about this or if you have any inputs for our future discussions around cadence, uh, want to know what we're going to talk about, email me at daryl at purpleshirtthursday.com and we can talk about it. And again, I would always love to get your input and feedback on anything about this podcast and uh, also would just love to hear from you. So that's it. I hope you have a wonderful Purple Shirt Thursday and we will come back to Cadence next week in April. Have a great day. If you're going to tell them everything, tell them I'm a good kisser. Tell them all the things you told me in your desperate whisper. If you're going to tell them everything, don't leave out the good part. Tell them the way that you broke my heart when you told me that you missed her.